Okay, in this video, I just wanted to talk about a way that I've solved a problem where we've got a listing layout. Um, I'm actually using the Jet Engine listing grid here. Um, and what we want is these images to all be the same uh, dimensions um, and also be clickable so they can go straight through to the uh, blog posts. Now, I found some issues with this. Now, the issue is that the customer is actually uploading all of these uh, images and they're uploading them in different sizes, different formats. We know what it's like. Yeah, no matter how many times you tell your customer, um, you know, to use the same image dimensions, uh, you know, they get different people to do it and you end up with all sorts of uh, sizes. And what we want to end up with consistency in how these look. So we don't want to have, you know, some tall ones and some short ones and some small ones and big ones. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't look consistent. So I found a couple of ways of doing this. And the first way I did it w worked, but it wasn't really good for page speed. Uh, and what that was is uh, over in the listing grid. Um, so I'm just going to minimize that and have a look at my listing grid here. So what I would do in the listing grid is I would set a background image here. And as we know, when you set a background image, so for example, I just grab a intersection here. And just delete one of those. And I set my background in here. Oops. If I set my background here and pick a image. I can set some positioning. Uh, so I set it to cover. Um, I can set a minimum height if I want, or I can stick a spacer in there. Uh, with the spacer, it gives me a bit more control. Oops. So I can set that to say 200. Uh, I've got some mobile responses settings, so I can change that. So that works. The problem with doing that is that it puts the full size image in here. There's no way in these settings for me to tell it to use a smaller size of the image. So what I end up with is all of these as being the full size image that's uploaded, which is not good for page speed. So what would be great is if in Elementor here, you could actually select, when you select this image here, if you could select the actual uh, WordPress size for that, so if I could set that as 768 or, or you know, 300 or whatever, um, that would be perfect. But unfortunately, we don't have that control. So it means we can't do that. So what I've done instead is I've just used a uh, image element, a straight out image element, and I've set the uh, dynamic field to be the fe featured image and link to the post URL. So doing that, uh, it works fine. Um, the problem we have is that with this is that we can, we can actually select what sizes we want, which is good for page speed. But what we end up with is images like this where they're all cropped to different sizes. Sorry, they're not cropped at all. So we end up with this really ridiculous ad. So depending on what they upload, you end up with different sizes. So that didn't work for me. So what I've found, uh, the easiest way, I've found a plugin which is brilliant. Uh, I'm sure there's others that do this and there's probably other ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you what I've done to solve this problem. So I've installed a plugin called Image Regenerate and Crop. Uh, so Image Regenerate and Select Crop, okay. So the defaults are pretty much as they need to be, except for I tick these two boxes here. What that does is that if you specify a size and it's close enough, say like if you set a size of 700 wide and the uploaded image is uh, 650 wide, it will upscale that image to fit. Uh, if it's too far out, it won't do anything with it at all. Just so you got to make sure you actually upload images close to what you want uh, for this to work. Uh, and pretty much shows you all of the current sizes that are defined. 
And so we can see the thumbnail crops. These others don't crop. So the 768 one here, it doesn't crop, which is why I'm having that uh, issue with the, uh, you know, this, this kind of layout here. So what I will do here is just save that setting. And up here, it's a, not an easy thing to find, but there is a little link up here that says image custom settings and define custom image sizes. I'm going to click on the sizes. That takes me off to um, the setting here. And what we want to do is we can actually tell it to crop those sizes if we want to. So we can say just crop them to the actual dimensions. Uh, so we've got our featured image, we can crop that there. What I'm going to do is add an image size. So I'm going to put listing uh, thumb. Oops. Okay. Now before I do this, I'm going to have to find out what size I actually want this. So let's say, for example, that is the image we want. We want everything to be like this one here, the first one on the left here. So the first thing we do is find out what the dimensions are that we need it to be. So I'm going to just bring up my Chrome Dev Tools and go into Device uh, and Responsive Mode. Basically move the slider until I get the widest uh, view of that image. So, so 767 wide is my breakpoint, and I need to find out what size that image is here. So let's use the selector, have a look at that. And it's telling me the rendered size is 727 by 485. So let's say 750 is the size we want. Okay, so what actual ratio is that? We need to work that out. So it's, it's saying the intrinsic is three to two. Uh, let's work that out. So if I go 485 divided by 727, so, so 485 by 727, Oops, uh, 485 divided by 727, that's 0.667. Uh, so if I multiply that by what I actually want, which is the, um, what did I say, 750 wide, I end up with 500 high. So 750 by 500 is the size that I actually want so that they all have that same ratio and there's the largest image uh, and I'll just display that image is going to be the best quality. So let's head back over to our media settings here. I'm going to make that 750 by 500. I'm going to crop this. Save the changes. Okay, now heading back over to our settings. Uh, what happened there? Taking out our media settings. So go back to our settings here and we'll see down here we've now got a listing thumb and it's cropping at 750 by 500 and we're cropping it in the center. Okay, so we can crop it to the top left, top middle, whatever. Center is probably going to be, be the most uh, sensible one to do. So once we've got that, if we just hit this refresh button here, it's going to go through all of the images and it's going to create that image size for me. I'll speed this up in the video. Okay, so there we are. So I'll head back over to my listing grid. I'm just going to refresh the page. I get my new image size. Select the image, and now in my drop down, I'll have a listing thumb. Update that. And head back over to here. And do a refresh. And there we go, it's cropped all of these to 750 by 500. So at my maximum size looks good, at the 
tablet size where I've got two looks good and our desktop size looks good but all of our images look great so it's a really simple way of doing this um, so we still use a standard image widget um, link to the post URL and set the actual image to the size we want it uh, we then have a situation where we've got the smallest possible uh, version of those images that will uh, work on uh, all the different screen sizes at, at the best quality, uh, but we're not having to download the full high-res images. And some of these might be uploaded at you know, 2,500 pixels wide, and if you've got a page full of those, it's just going to be really, really slow. So this is a great way of doing it. Uh, this plugin here, the Image Regenerate Select and Crop, uh, is just brilliant. It is an easy to use plugin, easy to create your image sizes, easy to manage the quality of them. Uh, also, once you've created your custom size, whenever you upload a new image, it will automatically get created. Uh, so it's a much, much easier way than trying to use background images uh, and trying to scale them and, and center them and all that sort of stuff. Now, the only thing I would say about this is that because it's automatically center cropping, it's not necessarily the best thing to do uh, because what you want to do is make sure when your customer uploads the photo, they upload it at the maximum size it's going to be displayed at, uh, at, at the correct dimension. So I would say, for example, this is a, what did I say, uh, my calculator was a, I think it was a, uh, say, if I go 500 divided by 750, so it's a 0.666 uh, ratio. So I would say that I would make the um, say 1200 wide or something like that, depending on what your website is. So if I went multiply that by 1200, uh, so it'd be 1200 by 800. That you'd want so if you got them to upload images at 1200 by 800 and then you showed them in a post view where it was the full width whoops that didn't work so if it's showing there it was the full width of that i don't even know what that size is have a look that's 960 wide there so in this case here, if I brought back my calculator, so if the maximum size is going to be displayed as 960 wide, you would take the uh, you know 0.6666666 times 960, and we've got 640. So it'd be 960 by 640 uh, would be the image size that you'd upload at. Now that is going to give you the best results. It's going to be the smallest uploads, take the least time. You then crop it how you want it visually not allowing the uh you know the uh, automatic cropping to just pick the center and crop it around that uh, so it's much better to upload the correct size and ratio of image in the first place uh, we all know that customers won't do that well some will but most won't uh, so this is a better option so that we can at least get uh, consistency uh, in the layout by making sure that they are the right ratio um, when they're displayed. So that's my take on how I'm going to do this. Uh, it makes sense to me, so hopefully it makes sense to you. Thank you.